I feel like it's been a while. I haven't helped you guys. And I'm talking to those of you who are currently studying software engineering or computer science. I remember back then in university, all of my coding lectures were literally taught in a Windows based machine. And that included the labs, like all the softwares to complete our projects were all within Windows. So you know what? Today we're gonna take this laptop and we're gonna transform it into like the ultimate development machine. So let's go at it step by step. So I'm assuming most of you know how to set up a computer out of the box. So let's skip that part. The first thing I want you guys to check is for updates. Click on start, then go to settings, then look for Windows update and then click on check for updates. Let it do its thing, it'll download all the updates you need in order for you to install them. Updates are very important, more often than not, they tend to fix security vulnerabilities, things an antivirus can't do, and it's why, in my opinion, it's worth uninstalling any third-party antivirus. Something like McAfee, for example, I find it tends to bug down performance by a lot. This is something that can be done by heading to settings, then you can go to apps, installed apps and then just look for McAfee. Once you find it, click on the three dots and you can go ahead and uninstall it. With this, I also recommend you uninstall a lot of the pre-installed nonsense that comes with a laptop. For me, those are things like OneDrive, some of the manufacturer's apps, Maps, Mail-in Calendar, any of those pre-installed helper tools like Microsoft To-Do, Whiteboard, Makes Reality Portal, News, People. A good rule of thumb to stick by is that if you can click on it and uninstall it, it's most likely safe to remove. Now that you've removed your antivirus, you can go on Settings, then you can click on Privacy and Security, Windows Security, and then just make sure you open Windows Security to make sure that everything is actually properly working. If you see app and browser control, just turn that on. And there you go. This is literally all the security the regular user needs, in my opinion. And if you head to settings, apps and startup, make sure that Windows security notification icon is on. In here, I also recommend turning most things off like Microsoft Teams, Edge, and so on, things you really don't need. If you want to go a bit more in depth, you can also do so within Task Manager. You'll get to see the startup impact within the Startup Apps tab. All of this is to set up your system to have fast booting times and deliver the best performance, something that can also be achieved by setting up a proper power plan. If you head to Control Panel, view by list and choose small icons you can change this within power options choose the performance mode plan and stick to that it'll eat more battery but you want to get the best out of your laptop and for the devs that like docking their devices make sure that within the choose what closing the lid does tab you set that up to do nothing you'll be simply able to dock your laptop and close the lid with no hassles. The last three things related to performance and apps would be making sure that within settings, accounts, signing in options, the restartable apps features is off. Also within advanced system settings, then performance settings, make sure that you check the adjust for best performance and make sure you install a proper browser like Chrome, Chrome is good, but Brave is better. It's a great browser in terms of privacy. It's based off Chromium and you can import your Google accounts and extensions from Google Chrome. And it comes with built-in features that blocks ads, trackers, and makes digital fingerprinting more difficult. At this point, you might want to restart your machine if you haven't done so in order to settle it with all the new changes. Before we jump into setting up your machine for development, there are a couple of things I recommend doing. So head to start then go into settings, head to accessibility, visual effects, and make sure transparency effects is off and animation effects is off. You can also make sure that in personalization, colors, transparency effects is off. Anyways, do feel free to still add your own touch to it, like an accent color, a wallpaper, and use dark mode. It's still your machine at the end of the day, so make sure you make it yours. Now, for most things web development related, you wanna make sure you run those through Linux or maybe any type of Linux environment. It'll make things easier for you. If you search for turn Windows features on and off and you make sure your virtual machine platform is turned on, your hypervisor is turned on and your subsystem for Linux is turned on, this will open the gates for you to install something like Ubuntu on your machine. Basically, dull USL is what Microsoft calls it. Once that's installed and your machine has restarted, go ahead and open command prompt and type dull USL 
hyphen hyphen install and take a look at all the distros they offer. I recommend you install the latest stable version from Ubuntu, which is 20.04. Write WSL hyphen hyphen install hyphen D Ubuntu hyphen 20.04 and click enter. Once it's complete, you can open it up within the start menu by searching for it. If you do get a kernel error, that can be fixed with a WSL update command. Let it do its thing and reopen Ubuntu to set it all up. From here, you just go through the setup, which is very basic and easy to do. I do recommend that once you are done the setup, you create a directory called developer. So MKDIR developer and do LS and there's your developer directory. You can also access Ubuntu within the file explorer, but you are a dev, you should run everything through the built-in terminal. Yeah, if you are on Windows, there is an app called Terminal right here. It holds different command line interfaces and it's the place where you can also modify it to automatically load up Ubuntu if you need to. But before we do so, there are a few commands you need to run within PowerShell. Just make sure you open PowerShell with admin rights. The first one is to check your execution policy. So what you want to do is type get execution policy. If it returns restricted, what you want to do is set it set execution policy to all signed. This will allow you to run any sort of scripts like I'm about to do to install Chocolatey basically a Windows package manager that will allow you to install tools. We use this a lot in school instead of wing it just because wing it doesn't have some of the older development tools that you need in school. I have my own account to their website, but you really don't need it to run their command. So don't worry about it. Just make sure you get rid of the set execution command so you don't set it again once you run it. So let's run it right now. then click always run you may need to shut down and restart powershell so let's just do that right now powershell open that again and write choco there you go with this, you can really surf their community website and find all the things you wish to install. For example, Git is a good one to start with. All you have to do is to run the command within PowerShell and it'll take care of it. Just make sure you restart the terminal so you can prompt git config to configure git for yourself. Basically, at this point, I would say you're pretty much ready to start tackling your first day of class. However, if your program is anything like mine and you're learning principles of object-oriented programming, distributed system, data structures, and algorithms, you might want to install Java. And the first thing I recommend doing is to install IntelliJ Community via Chocolatey. Just make sure you run the command by running PowerShell as an administrator. The first time you boot it up, IntelliJ will 100% verify whether or not you have a JDK installed. You can install OpenJDK from here, but at school we were taught to install the Oracle JDK from their website, so I recommend doing so. Just make sure you download their Windows MSI installer and kick that off to install it. Once it's installed, you do need to hit the start, edit system environment variables, click on that, then go to environment variables, click on path, click on edit, then click on new and then you want to go to your file explorer and locate java so you have to go to this pc windows program files then go to java and get your bin get that path Control c go back here do new Control v and click ok you also do need to install java home so click on new java home paste the same path just remove the bin and that should do it if you want to verify that everything works just make sure you check the java version within the terminal and it should output it at this point intellij should detect your new version by the way i do remember learning about databases and using sql server to do so whether i was to create my own databases or just use the pre-existing databases that were managed by the school it SQL Server was a tool we used to learn about SQL. Within PowerShell, you can type choco install SQL Server Express. 
let it run its installation process and restart your PC. Once that's installed, you need to install the SQL Server Studio to manipulate your database. It's a bit of an older program, but that's just how things work. That's cool. Let me actually open that up so I can show you guys how it works. Let's let it load. Connect. And now if you want to create a database, just right click new database, call it DB. Totally fine. Click OK. Then there's your new created database. Go to tables, create a new table if you want to create something new. And there you go, you can start messing around with that. So that's how my curriculum went in that area. This should cover like 75% of the tools you need to get your high level programming going. Some might use C++ as a way to learn low level and high level programming. I recommend you download and install Visual Studio for it. It's pretty simple to kick off and this should cover most of the tools you'll ever use at school. So Visual Studio, not to be confused with Visual Studio Code because that's what you'll most often use for web development. With Choco install VS Code, you can get started with your web development setup. On my end, it's pretty easy for me to set up VS Code because thanks to Microsoft and the integration of GitHub, it allows for my account to save all my preferences and extensions. A quick preview of my settings are the ones right here. And my extensions are things like ES6 code snippets, Prettier, Live Server, Python, ES7 plus React, and so on. But one major one that you'll need is DOLUSL, because with DOLUSL, you can open up a dependency of VS Code running hand in hand with your Linux environment, meaning that you'll have access to Linux commands within the built in terminal and to the user root directory where your developer folder lives. This is what really allows you to have an incredible web development workflow in Windows with Linux. Now, what does this mean? This means that most of our web development workflow will be done inside WSL, unlike Java or C++. It's a lot easier to develop apps within a Linux distribution. That's why people love MacBooks so much. So yeah, that's why MacBooks are so popular for web developers. I do want to mention Docker because I did use it a bit towards the end of my curriculum in team projects. You can download Docker off their website and have it work hand in hand with WSL. Just make sure that you go into settings, then you go into resources, then go into WSL integration and enable integration with additional distros Ubuntu 20.04. Apply and then just restart it. That's pretty much it. I do want to say that at this point, it's where things start to get a lot more fun. And this is where you start installing Node.js and Python within WSL. First of all, you do need to make sure Linux is updated. Run the sudo apt-get update command and wait for it. To install Node, you need two things, curl and nvm. Basically, curl is a command used to download stuff through the command line. Install that with sudo apt-get install curl. And the nvm is basically a tool used to download, install, manage, and upgrade Node.js versions. You can download it and install it with this command. Once that's done, restart your terminal and run the nvm install 16 command. You can also install version 18 if you want to. And to check the current version running, you simply run node hyphen hyphen version. Just swap between them using the nvm use and the version number command. With this, npm should also be installed and you should be able to install React, Angular and whatnot. As for Python, Python has something very similar to NVM. It's called Miniconda, the lightweight version of Anaconda. I'll leave a link down below, but essentially make sure you tell you get the right version of Linux. It'll import that into your home directory and that's where you'll run the sh command along the path and name of the file to install it. That's it, Miniconda should install. Just make sure you restart the shell again. From here, you can conda create a project. You can activate that environment to change from the base environment. In there, you can install the right version of Python you wish to use within that environment. You can make a Python folder and make a file with touch file.py and open that in VS Code with code dot. This is it. You can start playing with Python to test it out. This, this is how you set up a whole development environment for school. I more often try to remember my years in uni when I was in software engineering and computer science. I try my best to help you guys so you can get started with ease. Try to avoid Eclipse as an IDE for Java if you can please, it's horrible. Also, if you have a gaming laptop, make sure to update the drivers for it. GeForce Experience will allow you to do so. But yeah, overall that's it. Again, if you guys want to see a full review of the Slim 7i, let me know down below. 
I hope this video comes in handy for you guys. I'm signing out for today because I have to unbox the Pixel 8 Pro. That, stay tuned for that video next Sunday. Take care guys and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.